uh, Vesper theory, valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, says that uh, around a central atom, uh, the bonds uh, of the valence electrons uh, towards other um, atoms or also the lone pairs of electrons on the central atom, they have relatively uh, negative charges and uh, all being negative, they will repel each other so that uh, bonds and lone pairs of electrons will spread out as much as possible. This is the reason for the molecular ge geometries uh, we'll see here. Uh, you should be able to be familiar with all of these uh, geometries. In time, they should become intuitive as you know that things will spread out as much as they can from each other. So consider first uh, an, uh, a compound uh, with a Lewis dot structure which has uh, two atoms bound to the central atom and no lone pairs on the central atom. Right? So uh, two bonded atoms and zero lone pairs. These uh, total of two things around the central atom will spread out from each other as much as possible by giving this linear shape where uh, these bonds are as far as possible uh, as is possible uh, to be from each other. Um, this linear shape uh, has a bond angle of 180 degrees. This is easy uh, to calculate when you realize that the unit circle is 360 degrees. And if you divide this unit circle up into two parts, um, two hemispheres, uh, the top hemisphere has uh, an angle of 180 degrees and also the bottom hemisphere would have an angle of 180 degrees. An example of uh, a linear compound like this would be carbon dioxide. Now this is for AP and college level students, but uh, there are two things on the central atom. And uh, given that there are two things on the central atom, uh, the hybridization of the central atom uh, will be SP. Um, this is to say that uh, the S and uh, one of the P orbitals on the central atom are uh, combining together uh, and hybridizing. Um, and there will be two of those hybrid orbitals, which is, it's not critically important now that you know that, but just that you know that uh, it's SP uh, hybridized. All right, our next example. What if we have uh, a compound which has uh, three atoms bound to the central atom and no lone pairs of electrons on the central atom. Three bonded atoms and zero lone pairs. We have a total of three uh, areas of electron density or electron domains around the central atom. Now, uh, this uh, will cause these three things to spread out as much as possible again. Uh, and uh, the bond angle will uh, be 120 degrees. You know this because the unit circle is 360 degrees and you're dividing it up into one, two, three parts. 360 divided by three is 120 degrees. This is called a trigonal planar geometry. All three atoms are around the central atom are in the same plane, the, the plane of, uh, of your screen here, or normally the plane of a board um, or piece of paper. Um, all within one plane, uh, you could uh, fit a piece of paper <laughs> right over all of these. Okay. So an example of, uh, of a trigonal planar geometry is boron trichloride. Uh, and the molecular geometry, having three things around the central atom, one, two, three, is sp2. Please note that in the previous case where there were two things around the central atom, there were two letters, s and p. In this case where there are three things around the central atom, it's spp, uh, three letters, or sp2. In our next case, uh, what if we have uh, two atoms bound to the central atom and a lone pair of electrons on the central atom. Uh, so that we have a total of three things around the central atom, you'll have a very similar geometry as in the previous case. Both of these cases have three things around the central atom, and so they both have about a 120 degree bond angle. Uh, now, um, here the lone pair of electrons gets significant space instead of the bond and atom uh, that might have been here in the previous case. Uh, now, uh, the bond angle is going to be actually a little bit less than 120 degrees in this case uh, because this pair of electrons is uh, more uh, relatively negative than uh, the uh, bond uh, between A and B here, uh, being that it's just electrons here, whereas here it's electrons and uh, 
uh, positive protons. Uh, there's a greater overall negative charge from the lone pair of electrons than from these bonds, and therefore uh, this pair of electrons will repel both of these bonds more than the bonds will repel themselves. And so um, they'll be a little bit closer together than in the previous case, so the bond angle here is a little bit less than 120 degrees. Good example is sulfur dioxide, and this is sp2 hybridized around the central atom. There are one, two, three things around the central atom, three letters, spp, sp2. Next case, what if you have four bonded atoms around the central atom and zero lone pairs on the central atom? There are a total of four things around the central atom. This causes uh, all of these four things to actually have to uh, kind of go into three dimensions to maximize the distance between uh, the bonds. Um, so that uh, we have a tetrahedral structure where uh, these regular lines are lines in the plane of the board, but uh, this bolded line is a line which is actually coming out at you, uh, coming out of the board. And uh, the dashed line, uh, this uh, is actually going into the board. It's further away from your eye than B, A, or B here. So, in fact, this is in three dimensions, which I'll show you in class. Uh, but uh, it's a called a tetrahedral structure uh, because uh, it, is a, uh, it is a hedron. Uh, <laughs> it's a kind of pyramid uh, with four sides. Um, now, the bond angle is 109.5. It's, it's less than the original 120 degrees that we saw when there were just three things, uh, but it's greater than the 90 degrees that you might expect if all four things were in, uh, were in uh, just a plane. Yes, normally, if all of these four uh, bonded atoms around the central atom were in the plane of the board, we would divide up the 360 degree circle by four. So 360 divided by four is 90 degrees. But being able to go into three dimensions, these bonded atoms can spread out more so that the distance and the bond angle between them is greater than in this case. So it's greater than 90, but uh, less than 120. It's 109.5 degrees for compounds like methane. Now, here we have four total things around the central atom. And having four total things, we get four letters, SPPP or SP3. In our next case, we have um, uh, three bonded atoms around the central atom and a lone pair. The geometry is very similar to the previous case, but um, uh, we call it a trigonal pyramidal geometry. Uh, when we refer to the geometry, we're referring to the geometry of just the atoms. And here, uh, it's just a pyramid uh, where A is at the very top of the pyramid. Uh, and it's a three-sided, uh, well, well, maybe it's a four-sided pyramid, but it's called trigonal pyramidal. Um, now, uh, the bond angle is uh, about 107 degrees, less than the original 109.5 degrees for a tetrahedral structure because uh, this lone pair of electrons, again, has more repulsion uh, versus uh, these uh, bonds because the bonds have positive charge near them, whereas this lone pair of electrons is just negatively charged electrons. Being more negative, it's repelling these more than they repel each other. They'll be shoved together a little bit more so that the bond angle is 107 degrees, about. Now, uh, a good example of this is ammonia, and again, it's sp3 hybridized because there's four things around the central atom. Finally, uh, we have, uh, what if we have two bonded atoms around the central atom and two lone pairs? Then, uh, having two very uh, significantly repelling lone pairs of electrons, uh, the bonded atoms will be even closer together than in the previous case, about 104.5 degrees. Um, now, the geometry is just bent. It's uh, it's not a line, these three atoms. They're bent, just like in the previous bent case, although the bond angle is slightly different. Good example of this is water, sp3 hybridization. Say you needed to determine the molecular geometry of a compound, say OF2. From this formula, you can determine the molecular geometry by determining the Lewis dot structure, which uh, we saw in a previous video. So draw out the Lewis dot structure, and this gives you a code. Look at the number of atoms on the central atom and to the number of lone pairs on the central atom. There are two bonded atoms on the central atom and two lone pairs on the central atom. So scroll up. Where did we see two? Up oh, there are two bonded atoms on the central atom, two lone pairs on the central atom. That is a bent structure. Uh, 
And so uh, you could draw out a bent structure like so. In another case, uh, arsenic uh, trihydride uh, draws the Lewis-Stout structure again. Now, we see that we have three bonded atoms on the central atom and zero lone pairs on the central atom. So, three, zero. Scroll up. Where's a three, zero? Up, oh, here it is, three, zero. Three bonded atoms, zero lone pairs. That's a trigonal planar geometry, about 120 degree bond angle around the central atom. And so, we rearrange this Lewis-Stout structure into this molecular geometry. Thanks for watching, guys.